Hi, this is Bobby Edwards from Bridgehead Software. You are viewing part two of my seven part series on disaster recovery for cache based EMRs for hospitals. In this part, I'm going to cover Bridgehead recovery and architecture. I hope you find this valuable and I would appreciate your feedback. So please send it to our Twitter handle at Bridgehead HTM. Our website is also www.bridgeheadsoftware.com. This is going to be going over the cache for epic backup and recovery and this is particular to the bridgehead recovery architecture and again this is the bridgehead recovery architecture so the bridgehead recovery architecture um, the bridgehead healthcare data management uses a five layer model the first three layers relate to the backup operation and then there are two optional layers media management and robotic storage management in the backup layer, the control node is the central point from which the bridgehead healthcare data management manages the backup operations. The service nodes are individual systems that hold the live data, and backup nodes are the systems that migrate backups to secondary storage. The control node initiates unattended backups of data in the service node. It maintains an object database that determines what to backup, when to do it, and where to store the data. The control node initiates saves automatically based on a defined schedule. It can also be used to initiate saves and restores manually. The control node communicates with the service node <clears throat> using the RExec protocol for Linux or Unix. The service node performs the actual backup operation by reading the local files, formatting them into save sets, and transferring the data to a backup node. A file transfer mode, uh, a file transfer protocol similar to FTP is used to communicate with the backup node. The backup node then carries out any media management functions necessary to save the data to secondary storage, usually with the help of a media manager. Once the backup operation is completed, the service node notifies the control node of the completion status so that it can update its databases as appropriate. An important advantage of the Bridgehead Backup over other backup software is the ability to distribute backup history to separate servers to avoid overloading a central controlling system while retaining a central point from which everything can be controlled. The control node uses the control path between itself and its service nodes to initiate backup operations. A separate data path transfers the back the backup between the service node and backup node and onto the attached storage device. The Bridgehead Enterprise Media Manager component provides a media management layer of the Bridgehead backup. It has facilities for volume, save set, and device management, including on site and off site rotations. It includes robotic or human operated control of secondary storage devices and application of site defined policies. The Bridgehead Enterprise Media Manager can manage multiple robotic media libraries, allowing them to be shared between applications. It sends instructions to robot robots via an open interface to Robot Manager or a, or a third-party Robot Manager, thus providing the interface between the backup node and the media library. The backup node uses the Bridgehead Enterprise Media Manager to allocate storage media and devices to read and write from them and to log on which media backups are saved. Bridgehead recovery architecture is designed for scalability. This is a highly scalable architecture. It is a leading recovery solutions for hospitals worldwide. It is implemented in over 1,200 hospital customers worldwide in over 1,800 hospital environments that are protected and managed. Workload optimization leverages multi-streaming. This improves the performance of backup and restore operations by dividing the data into portions and transferring these portions to and from the backup node in parallel streams. Each stream is responsible for one portion of the data and it makes a separate connection with the backup node. All streams run concurrently. If a stream has to wait because there are insufficient resources on that particular backup node, for example, data is being written to tape and all the tape drives are busy, the other streams will continue to work, providing that the timeouts are configured appropriately, they will wait and the stream will resume once the stream is available. So keeping in mind 
during configuration, understanding the length of time it will take for a particular backup and the length of time that timeouts should be scheduled for can have an impact on how effectively this environment runs. So the Bridgehead recovery architecture is also designed to leverage advanced SAN technology. It has built-in support for high-performance SAN attached storage. So there's the freedom to select models from EMC, HP, IBM, Dell, and NetApp. It's integrated with the embedded snap and mirror technologies these vendors provide. And Bridgehead supports all of the storage vendor cloning and snap technologies that Epic supports. What this does is it makes it easier to leverage cloning and snap technologies from the major storage vendors. Since Bridgehead supports all of them that Epic supports, it also delivers a complete process versus the pieces and parts that could be assembled to achieve the necessary backups. Having a central controlling element allows for a scheduled engineered solution. The ongoing engineering is performed by Bridgehead and it's part of the integration. So as elements change or are added in the future to different hardware types, they become incorporated into the future updates to this solution. This is valuable because those updates are parted as part of the maintenance agreement. So customers that have an active maintenance agreement get these, these updates as part of the existing product and there's nothing new to buy. That concludes part two of my seven part series on disaster recovery for cache based EMRs for hospitals. In the next part, I'm going to cover Bridgehead Data Protection Suite for cache databases. I hope you found this session valuable. I also encourage you to follow Bridgehead on Twitter for notification on future presentations at Bridgehead HDM. Our website again, www.bridgeheadsoftware.com.